I would like to now introduce my final friend on this panel, <laughs> Judith LeBlanc. Judith is the Field Director for Peace Action, a national grassroots organization representing 90,000 members, committed to a fundamental change in U.S. foreign policy. She coordinates the Move the Money campaign, an effort to organize grassroots coalitions of community, labor, and peace groups to change national spending priorities from wars and weapons to fund jobs, human needs, and steps towards a new economy that works for all. She is working with other national groups to develop alternatives for workers, their families, and communities who have depended on wars and newer who depend on wars and newer weapons for good-paying manufacturing jobs. Judith is a member of the Caddo Tribe of Oklahoma, but she lives right here in Harlem, New York City. Thank you, Jackie. I'm really honored to be on this panel. I mean, is this the dream team of the global yeah. movement for a nuclear free world and climate justice? Thank you, have it. And right. really, and isn't this the team that can help us answer the question of this panel? What, what to do when national politics are locked up on the big issues? All my relations. It's a phrase from a Lakota prayer, a phrase my ancestors used to express the interrelatedness of all people and with Mother Earth for all times. Endless interconnectedness. That is exactly how to describe the moment we are in. There's no possible way to save Mother Earth from destruction without believing and acting as an interconnected whole. Brothers Tony and John and the Marshallese people remind us of that connection. They challenge us to act as one in solidarity with the Marshallese people to save Mother Earth and to save ourselves. The Non-Proliferation Treaty seems to be hopelessly stonewalled by our government. What will it take to compel our government and the governments around the world to negotiate in good faith? Well, you know, the mayor, he knows all too well the challenge of dealing with the crisis of everyday living in our communities alongside of the necessity to respond to the global threats of climate crisis and nuclear annihilation. How do we make the connections between everyday issues to the bigger catastrophic dangers in a meaningful way to have real political impact? We know that nuclear weapons and a militarized national budget are the biggest obstacles to meeting the needs of our communities and climate crisis globally. More money is spent on wars and weapons than on jobs and public transportation and all public services, as well as addressing climate crisis. It was a very important victory for the Mayors for Peace to have succeeded in moving the U.S. Conference of Mayors to pass a strong resolution that was drafted by our friends sitting at the table, a strong resolution for nuclear disarmament and demilitarizing the federal budget. Yet, how do we use these public affirmations to build our political power? Building grassroots political power is the only path to changing government policies, building our political power. That is what organizers, especially at the local level, from all the social movements, are grappling with. And some say, some of our best organizers say, and even the mayor said, nothing's happening in DC, so go local. Go local in our organizing. Build up local victories. Yet, Local victories do not necessarily build towards a national policy shift. Yes, the all our relations philosophy, but that theory of change comes into play. Plain and simple. Like my grandma's fry bread, it's all about the right combo of flour, water, and the temperature of the oil. And like political struggle, it's not a simple process. It's an interaction of all the ingredients and the conditions, which makes for a great, not good, but great fry bread, as well as addressing some of the most pressing global dangers that we face. I want to share a problem with you. 
I want you to walk a mile in my moccasins and the moccasins of the organizers who are preparing for the 2015 civil society events, April 24th through the 26th, 2015, at the time of the U United Nations Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conference. An international committee of peace and justice groups is planning civil society events. We had our first meeting yesterday. So I want to share with you uh, some of my impressions, some of what I think are the biggest challenges we face in successful events at the time uh, in April 2015. The plans are to organize for the last weekend of April, April 24th to the 26th, the tried and true events, similar to this climate justice weekend. I think there may be some leaflets here that can give you more detailed information. On Friday night and Saturday, April 24th and 25th, we will hold an international conference with speakers and workshops projecting a global perspective on nuclear abolition, climate and economic justice and demilitarizing the global economy. On Sunday, of course, we're going to match, we're going to do street actions, we're going to send a signal to the UN conference that the world stands for peace, for abolition, and for climate and economic justice. The day will end with a festival to solidify and inspire our base, grow the organizational infrastructure of the movement, and do some public education. But the biggest challenge, it's not those events. It's what happens between now and April 2015 to generate the popular political pressure on all the governments for real steps towards negotiations in good faith. How to go local when we know that the change we want is global and national. We need a multiplicity of tactics, tactics shaped by the goals of impacting the UN conference, our governments, and growing a movement for the long haul. The right combo of tactics, like my grandma's fried bread. Yes, we are mobilizing around a UN event that will deal with a treaty that is roadblocked, sidelined, and sandbagged by the US and other nuclear powers for years. And although it hurts to admit it, the global and the US abolition movements, well, we're not yet a politically empowered grassroots movement, as much as it hurts to admit that. But we have hardcore, devoted, true believing organizers, some are sitting on this panel, others are in the room, who believe we must and we can build up an abolition movement that can save Mother Earth from nuclear and climate destruction, and that the biggest obstacles to climate justice are wars, weapons, and militarism. So walk a mile in our moccasins. I want to know what you think. What are the opportunities to mobilize public awareness and organize a grassroots movement that connects saving Mother Earth to the ongoing local struggles in our communities? What creative tactics are needed to galvanize grassroots attention. Clearly, we need local activities which transcend social movement boundaries between climate, economic justice, racial equity, workers' rights, and peace. That's clear. We also need the big picture global dimension. The Marshall Islands lawsuit is the greatest handle we have to raise up our global interconnectedness, solidarity with the Marshallese people to save our planet and ourselves. What do we do locally to build our political power globally and have impact on our governments? Well, we build alliances between social movements and elected officials, generate public awareness using every tool, social media, teach-ins, opinion pieces and newspapers, passing resolutions like at the US Conference of Mayors to deepen the understanding, with the goal of deepening the understanding of the roots and the interrelationship of problems and solutions. We need a blended, interconnected approach between local organizing and consciousness raising and national and global initiatives. The right blend of water, flour, and very hot oil. What do we do when national politics are locked up? Well, Frankly, it's not brain surgery. It is not the immaculate conception here. We shake up 
politics with a multiplicity of tactics. Number one, using global opportunities to shed light on the roots of the crisis problems of everyday living. Knowing that local victories are constrained by national policies and global conditions. Number two, we use opportunities for global collaborations to reveal the local consequences of an action to build our movement. There are local consequences if we do not act together at the grassroots. Number three, we build across boundaries of social movements. We engage our local elected officials, our national elected officials, to maximize our strength and impact and build awareness of common needs and long-term solutions. solutions. We will get sidelined. We will be the lunatic fringe if we disconnect the local from national policies and global collaborations. So that is the path to changing national policies and global conditions, linking up the local with the global. A nuclear-free world, climate justice, is achievable if we focus on the here and now, giving local, going local, with an eye on root causes and solutions. So I invite you to join us to put on our moccasins, or if you want to put on your sneakers, and join us in building towards this April 24th through 26th civil society events or, uh, that's around the Non-Proliferation non Treaty Review Conference in April 2015. Because as Brother Tony says, we have a very righteous cause, and we have a mandate. The wisdom of my ancestors endures. We are all related. The solutions to big and small crisis problems are interconnected. Even in complicated political moments as we are in, we must not forget that we are all related. We are related in the struggle to save Mother Earth. Thank you.